This is a new type of video for you guys today, and I'm going to label this series Matt's Strats. And I'm going to be talking about strategy at the intermediate level and into the advanced level. So what I did for this first game is I went through chess space. I looked for a recent game with players between 1100 and 1700. These players are both rated around 1500. This is an over the board classical game played in Dubai. And at this point, white just played pawn to a3, you can see here, and it's black to move. So what I want to do in this series is talk about how to evaluate positions, how to think about imbalances, and really focus on using strategic aspects of the position to determine which moves to play next and which plans to play for. So in the game, black plays knight to a6. Now I want you guys to pause the video right here and think about the different imbalances and give me a guess on what you think the evaluation is. And put it in the comments below what you think your, your guess is on the eval. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to pause the video, give you a second. All right, so now let me talk through what I think the components are of the eval, and then I'll give you the actual evaluation. White has the bishop pair, first of all. We see the two bishops for white, e3 and f3, and only in the one bishop for black. So it's two bishops against bishop and knight. I give that bishop pair around half a point on average. White has more space. This advanced c pawn, none of these pieces are cramped for white. Black's pieces are just a little bit cramped. I think that's around half a point advantage for white, maybe a little bit less, maybe a quarter of a pawn. And these are subjective, so just stick with me. Um, in terms of weak pawns, a5 is the weakest pawn for black and d4 is the weakest pawn for white, I think those approximately cancel out. So far we're looking at around a 0.75 to a 1 pawn advantage for white, based on what we've talked about so far. The last factor I think is king safety. Look at the white king, completely safe. Look at the black king, pretty safe, but it's a little bit unknown, right? This bishop on f6 is trying to guard all of these dark squares, and white does have the three minor pieces over here on the third rank that could potentially attack this black king. So I think this one's a big question mark, but you have to give at least some advantage for white. So I'm going to say plus one here, maybe all the way up to plus two is what my instincts would tell me. Looking at the stockfish eval, it's a plus 2.3 in this position. So if you were anywhere around plus one and a half or higher, Congrats, because this is an equal position, symmetric pawns, and there's not a lot of tactical shots in the position, so it's not easy to figure that out. All right, so now let's see what was played in the game. In the game, white played pawn to b4, offering this pawn trade, uh, a takes b, and that's what black went for. White took back, and black played knight to c7. Now again, I want you to pause the video and stop and think for a second. How have the imbalances changed, and what is the new evaluation? All right, so I'll give you my take. White still has the bishop pair. I'm going to give white half a point for that. But now the weakest pawns on the board are both on white side, b4 and d4. Black's b7 pawn I don't consider weak. So I think that's a half a pawn for black, and I would say it's about even. Um, White obviously has to figure out how to utilize the bishop pair, because otherwise the black knights are going to do well in this closed position. Stockfish eval is around minus 0.2, so black advantage. So white just gave up the 2 point whatever advantage down to minus 0.2 because of this b4 move. So let's talk about what should white play in this position. Now if white just plays a non-committal move, for example bishop to g4, we're looking at around a 0.8, right? White is holding those same advantages we talked about. But one move that you should really consider in this position is bishop to g5. And the reason bishop to g5 is good is we're offering a trade of this f6 bishop, and that's the piece that defends these squares around the black king. That f6 bishop is very valuable. Black takes on g5, queen takes g5, now look at the dark squares around the black king. They're all opened up. And look at the knight on e7. 
doesn't have any great squares. Uh, it could attempt to head to f5, or it could attempt to head to c8. There's no other open squares. f5 is going to lose a pawn, or it's going to lose a some material, I think. Let's check it out. Yeah, rook takes e8, jack, queen takes e8. It's going to lose a knight. So knight f5 is bad. Let's look at knight to c8. In this position, we can trade rooks and then play knight f5. And now look at the three lower value pieces for black and look at white's pieces. Everything is good for white. Black only has the queen that really has any mobility. This is a two and a half pawn stockfish advantage. White has an attack with the king safety advantage, mobility advantage, and no major weaknesses. Everything is going really well for white. That's how you fully utilize that two and a half pawn advantage that Stockfish is giving. Now you might be wondering why didn't Bishop to g5 work in the game line after b4 was played. So let's take a look at that. So b4, a takes b, a takes b, knight c7. What if Bishop to g5 here? There's a small difference. The knight on c7 not only gets ready to come to the b5 square, hitting d4, but it also defends the e8 rook, and from there defends the f6 bishop. So black plays knight f5 here, and rook takes e8. Black has knight takes e8, and everything is defended. This bishop on g5 is actually double attacked. Bishop and queen on d8 are attacking it. So it's not like uh, white's going to win this f5 knight, or really double the pawns even, because bishop takes g5 is coming. So after bishop takes, queen takes, let's say these knights trade off, look at this resulting position in the end. Um, if you want, you could pause the video again and think about the evaluation. But we now have a good knight against bad bishop scenario with blocked up pawns. Um, even though this bishop is the opposite color of these pawns, it's still a bad bishop in my opinion because it's not able to attack any of these pawns. Um, so it's kind of that classic good knight against a bad bishop endgame. And the eval here is close to minus one for black, somewhere between minus half a pawn and, and minus one. So really good position for black. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want to keep these kind of short. This one was about seven minutes. Let me know in the comments. Do you want to see more of these Matt Strats videos? Um, and I would love to hear your feedback on how we can improve them because I want these videos to be something where you see a Matt Strats video and you say, hey, I could just watch this at breakfast. I could watch it at lunch. I could watch it on the commute. And just pick up a, a strategy tip or two from games of intermediate players, intermediate to advanced level. So please let me know in the comments what you think. And I will plan to do more of these Matt Strats videos. Thanks for watching.